Hi, it's the girl out there right here with you. It's me, Cindy. And this week we are here with Dear Diary, <laughs> da, 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 who is sitting with her beautiful blooms behind her looking ever so lovely. Feel oh, the floating blooms. The floating blooms look so good. How are you, Dear Diary? I'm good. I am, um, you know, in the kind of scrambly part of March break where I'm trying to work, but also trying to make, um, entertain the children whilst working. Yeah. So really just involves me being on my phone a lot while I'm at work and trying to coordinate plans. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the fun. Um, well, I, I will say this week I'm I took a few days off this week and um, just trying to really be present with the boys um, and and enjoying that because last week they were away for a few days. And um, so I am really like just like, ah, just in it with them, which is nice. Yeah, because I have not had that with them. Um, and, but yeah, I do find you can sort of we were downtown today. You could just see all of the parents just like like almost it's, that like it's not over yet it's and not it's finished really long right now because <laughs> yeah. it used to only be one week and now the second week <laughs> and I do recall as a child feeling like one week felt like super short yeah so and I so I, I do think you know the teachers the staff at the school the kids I do think a two-week break does them all really well yes um but it is, it's a scramble for most families, I think, to try and figure it out. Cause like you have two weeks at Christmas, but there's so much going on already. And there's so many holidays in there that you don't really notice the time as much. You don't notice it, but I just, yeah, this, I'm also like, you know, we've spent a lot of money now. Like, uh, it's just, you know, let's just get you back into the routine so that we don't keep spending. <laughs> That's it. Right. Yeah. All the little special things start. <laughs> just all a little bit too much but um, like, I wish I'd just gone to Mexico really, yeah. point. honestly today that was it because we I surprised them with a hotel and then by the end of the day when um you know whatever I'm like you know what by the end of this because they want to go shopping and then you want to do this I was like that's almost the equivalent to a ticket somewhere yeah yeah. But uh yes, but you did have an amazing last week. I did. And well, thanks. You were also part of my amazing last week. Yeah. <laughs> you you were kind of doing the March Big Scramble with your work and the yes. <laughs> holiday that was happening at my house. Yeah. I had friends visiting from Ottawa that I hadn't seen in over a decade. Um and longer than that for any significant amount of time. And I just, you know, it was one of those situations where I didn't realize how much I'd missed my friends until she actually got the here and her family. And um, I've never had such, I've never been so comfortable with guests in my house before. <laughs> Some of your listeners may have heard me complain about how much um, Christmas hosting really gets on me um, or any other holiday for that matter. But this was nothing like that. Um, I also set the intention that I was going to enjoy it and it was going to be a holiday for me, even though it was in my house and, um, oh, it was just, it was, it was pretty magical actually. Um, in hindsight, I just, all the, all those little memories, all those laughs, all those, you know, moments that happened were just so special. It was, uh, I think it's, you know, thinking back, I obviously wasn't there for all of it, but I walked in um, and um, you know, we talk a little bit about having just a group of women and my vision, which I will hold strong to that we will one day live together and um, mm -hmm. your husband's just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> it's okay. You got um, along so well with four women. Yeah. Those four loud, strong women in his house. I think he's going to be just fine. He'll be fine. But there was just the, I, I kind of had dropped in like, you know, like, Bleh! and, um, and I, I just was like, hi. And our friend who was there, who I hadn't seen obviously in 15 years either, but you and she were so close, right. And wanting to give you guys that time. 
And, um, and we, I was like, oh my gosh, like somebody's vacuuming, somebody's cooking, somebody's prepping something. And I was like, I, I don't even know where I fit right now, except that I have my period. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> And I loved her analogy where she was like, oh, you would just go in the red tent right now. And we will all just nurture you during this time while you are in the red tent and you need to just rest and take care of yourself. And I was like, I like the red tent. Yeah. <laughs> book also. Um, but yeah, that's what would happen when, and you know, it was, it was like, no wonder they're polygamists out there. Like yeah. having that many capable women in one household really lightens the load of running a household i mean yeah. there are some serious perks like, i don't know about the long term but in the short term i like honestly i would be sitting down having a glass of wine and somebody had just cooked you know cooked dinner cooked dinner put yep. the dishes away somebody had vacuumed earlier dried the dog off from the rain like it's just they all get the little things now i get not every person is like that but um that was just remarkable how relaxing it is <laughs> multiple well, women I, in the house that do what you do yes moms you know people who know how to run a household i mean just that is a serious break that's why we called it mom camp or mom camp yeah i think it, what, did, what did you reference I, I i said oh you had a it was a really great soul douche is what i called it <laughs> yeah. they loved that they love that and i guess we you know what you have had this friend that we haven't named yet on your podcast so really I mean, she's she's kind of tiffany. it's tiffany yes. yeah yes. um who um who lost her wife a few years ago and um is since in another relationship and so we got to meet her new partner um yes. in person and her son and anyway so it was um yeah it was just a fantastic visit it was it. A, yeah i know I, and uh and the soul Douche, which you and I have talked about on another podcast too. And I explained to them, um, just <laughs> it's a joke from a movie, but I was like, it's like a true cleansing of the soul. And I feel like, um, you know, you, you had them there for, you know, how long were they with you? Five or six days, five or six days, which really I know for you, um, is a long time having people in your space, typically, right. Yeah. Anyone, no matter how much you love them. Mm -hmm. Um, and to have, and then in and out of that, you also had an, another person, like another one of our friends come up, like you kind of had a rotation of people in your home. Mm -hmm. And so like, you were just so happy, um, you know, really, I think it's, it's showing another space of you too, like this mm -hmm. beautiful place where you're at a, a free side of you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. With just like letting go of all that perfectionism mm -hmm. I hang on to sometimes with company. Yeah. But I also, because, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. It, well, obviously these are really close friends so it's, yeah. it's different but appreciated yeah that I actually had a holiday in my home yes fantastic yeah and I totally think that um what what do you what is that word again where you all are living um polygamist like polygamist. when a man has multiple wives. yeah so I totally think it could work I don't know if um they all need to date the man I think <laughs> yeah it could just be a man, his wife, and all of her close friends. All of her close friends. And so I feel like that's how you sell it to Dave. Term for that. Um, like, the, you know, there was the show, The Sister Wives. So yeah, can't take that one. But yeah, um, yeah we'll, maybe by the end of the show, we'll- We'll, we'll figure it out. Cause I just think, you know, how, how even I could just see Dave just like, hey. And then yeah. <laughs> Cause when the people around you are happy. You're, you're happy. <laughs> So, to which Aretha, uh, you know, texted us yesterday on two, two day. Yeah. And said, well, the, all these women, single moms just bought a house together. She's like, yeah. I feel like this is where it's at. So it was like, this is, this is clearly the trend of what's happening right now. Yes. And I think that's where I will definitely say there's a moment, um, where I have looked at myself and, um, definitely in the last two or three months for sure, where I'm like, I, I don't think I can keep doing this. Like, I think I need no. help. <laughs> Women weren't 
meant to live alone, right? Oh. Like we're meant to be in groups of women and be the gatherers and be yeah. the, you know, taking care of everything. And yes. The men just, you know, not just, I love men. They got, they were the ones who hunted and they yes. brought the resources home. And then, and then we took care of it. And if you have a, you know, a whole group of women to do that with, and it's not just you, yeah. you know, it just it, it is something about that mindset that is different. Yeah. I really, lo- I do love the idea. Cause even when she'd sent that note yesterday and I was busy, like trying to scramble to get all these things done. I was like, yes, uh, <laughs> yes, please do this <laughs> we're on the market for a castle we need a castle <laughs> my husband and my best friends um for a future home together in the long term at least for vacations it's, it would be fantastic <laughs> could just see dave and all of the children out <laughs> so. i'll take the children hunting yeah. <laughs> will you wash the clothes by hand <laughs> and make herbal remedies from the forest <laughs> but without the I, w- I could totally do the herbal remedies from the forest but the washing the clothes by hand thing probably no, not i could not do that no. but we'd be like oh it's red <laughs> on the red tent this week i'd always be like i i think i'm in the red tent again <laughs> <laughs> no, oh no we would need you as the 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 healer you're right. Yes. You would be the healer. You would have a huge job. Yes, that would be my job again. I'd be like, yeah. when I come back in the red tent. <laughs> oh, look at that red tent again. Here I am. <laughs> yes. So we. Uh, so I said to you, and I don't know if you had any luck finding sounds. Did you find any sounds? I didn't. I thought you were finding sounds. Oh. God. Oh, I did find I some sounds, recording. but that's okay. okay. I had said. Um, I had said to you early just before I was like find some sick sounds but I didn't know if that message got across that's why I'd ask um because um I have I had said in bliss space this week like to pay attention to um one day just noticing sounds and to be more aware um just active listening I don't know I don't know how you were that day with it um but I was more aware of sounds that day and then I wanted to like literally punch my child in the head. <laughs> right. Yeah. I realized. Oh, quick mute. Oh, your dog's right. Um, I, yeah, it was interesting how as soon as I was like, oh, I'm going to pay much more attention to, to the sounds today because it is, it is really good to actually listen to that. And then I was like, oh, there's. So, so many sounds that irritate me. And I was curious if that was the same for you. Yeah. Um, again, in the, in the kind of scramble of back to work this week, and I, I really have been um, putting a back burner on, on some of the bliss space stuff, but I do, I have done that. Like I, I, my thing you know you do that in the forest and it's really really interesting but yeah no I can hyper focus on the most irritating sound yes quite easily depending on the state of mind yes and so that has been so I was gonna I was going to play you some sounds to see what if they irritated you or if you didn't if they had no impact because it's interesting when you start. So then in that day, I started to ask um, Hudson and Chase, like, what sounds do you not, don't bother you at all? And what sounds in general, like it's an interesting, so it became an interesting yeah. conversation right. because for me, I cannot stand um, this when somebody puts a piece of food and then bites on to the metal of a spoon. I don't know if you've ever. Oh, yeah. Um, and so that sound of it, <laughs> like, I, it's the word, like it almost grates inside of me. Mm-hmm. And then I think like, can't they feel that in their mouth? Like, can't they? And every bite they're chewing the spoon and it's really bad. Chase never has noticed that never a big deal but for him if you have paper and it rubs together 
he oh can. yes so you I was curious if you'd ever if paper had been a sound for you mm. Mm -mm. no I mean other than like nails on a chalkboard right like the obvious one yeah I can't think of a just a baby's crying <laughs> uh I really hate that sound is that does that make me a bad mom um I really hate that sound um <laughs> men farting in their sleep also yes. disgusting um or like you know that like that like dry kind of dry mouth down trying to get oh yeah yeah like when somebody's just kind of like slapping their tongue around the inside of their mouth turns out I actually have a lot of sounds that irritate me um, <laughs> when I think about it unfortunately yeah yeah yes good conversation so yeah no I do have a, I do know somebody else who's very irritated by the teeth and the cutlery um and I like I also don't particularly notice it I know that when I swallow um I'm really loud like my, <laughs> you, maybe you've noticed it before no my notices it all the time he's like oh just 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 a little sip of water huh <laughs> like, apparently it's aggressive the way i swallow um and i sh shouldn't have bought my husband into a conversation about swallowing because i realize in hindsight that that goes to another place for most people yeah. it was not where i was going it's not when the reference comes up it's simply drinking a glass of water generally <laughs> it's when i'm really thirsty and i try and drink it fast apparently it's very loud i know exactly what you're saying but i will say there's always a sunday night dinner right. and my son is sitting across from me and he is a loud swallower too <laughs> i've never noticed you at all but i will look across from him and he's just casually drinking and i'll be like <laughs> yeah and it's something, yeah, that's interesting. See, these are these, I love this conversation. But there is a name for people who can't stand the sound of other people chewing or eating food. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and I didn't nice. know this, and it actually is something that you that people have to work on. I, these are things yeah. I did not realize. Um, so yeah, this is, um, there was a person I was actually working with and she had said that this was something she was working on. But for me, it is, yeah a big thing that I have to stop yes. myself from and like work through if people are biting on their fork. Yeah. Or you just tell them to stop. I try, but it gets, if, if that's the use, the way you're used to eating, you can't though, right? Like they, they can't they like, can't it's really nothing it. to do with them. It's always, it's about mm -hmm. me, but yeah, but yeah, it was, so that was an interesting day where I realized where I was trying to be aware of the, all the sounds and what, what I could take in. Cause it does actually, um, when we're, when building your intuition, right. Sounds right. so important because while you're having a conversation with somebody, you might suddenly hear like the wind blowing, and that is for that person. So it's so good to expand and understand what all of these things happening are. So it's just an exercise for you to be aware. But in that day, it built all these conversations in another way. So I was like, oh, we should really have these conversations because it's also good why you actually avoid um sounds and why you avoid like you go the other way and you get irritated so you don't pay attention to things too right mm -hmm. right yeah yeah and I, I i totally am paying more attention to those things for sure except when you're in a busy time <laughs> well yeah no but um just in terms of those things that happen in your body when you're trying to understand what your intuition is yes saying. yeah yes. I've had a weird one lately that I was going to ask you about, but um, oh yes. So, you know me, I'm not a big crier, but okay, it's happening right now. So when I'm not feeling emotional and I have many have not been able to pull through the, like I say, what it means, but I get this crazy tightening in my throat. Like I am needing to cry, but it feels like it's just happening so randomly like i'll be working on something at work or i'll be 
you know, having a conversation and I'm just like, what is it? My God, what is the trend? I cannot piece together the trend of what the tightening in my throat is. Well, that is your throat chakra. So it's that you're wanting to express something and that you usually hold it back. So, right. Mm -hmm. So you are used to not expressing it. Right. Whether you've done that your whole life, right? Like, or you're used to subconsciously. Right. Um, and so when you always say, I'm not a crier, you mm. have programmed yourself to say, I am not a crier. I do not cry. Mm. So therefore, then you now like, like, so therefore, whether it's that you deem that as um, bad, bad, bad or, or whatever, good yeah. or yeah. weak. Um, and so that's become something for you. So then now it's like you are becoming so much more open and so much more, um, and not that I, sh I shouldn't say that so that that sounds like one, again, I'm almost making it like one is good and one is bad. When I say that you're becoming no, no, more open. But you have somewhat of a reference when you're trying yes. to explain it. So as you're becoming more aware of your body, suddenly it's like the, the throat is opening. And so you'll suddenly feel like, oh, there's an emotion there that I'm not used to. And so it's, it's for you, it's like, you're wanting to, to voice something. And so it's, it's connecting it all together. Does that make sense? Yeah. I just, like I say, it feels like it comes out of nowhere sometimes. Yes. But, okay. I often will cry unrelated to anything. Yeah. And I definitely am more of a crier since um, I was attuned by you. <laughs> I definitely Sorry. cry more since then. Um, and it's not that I'm afraid to cry. Yes. I just, like, I don't like really sobbing in front of anyone. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, anyway, so like I say, it was just interesting to me comes like, I know that feeling. I know that is the feeling of crying. But where did it come from? It's like, it just whoosh in out of nowhere. Yeah, because it's just, yeah, that's what it'll be. It's just this, um, I feel like, because I'm getting a nudge on my head right now as you're asking it. So I think there's some, like, that, yes, there's you're right. There's something to it, for sure. There's something to it. And yeah. that there's, um, so it's like, suddenly then it's it's something that you're dealing with from, like, it's like, it's, it's something its way out somehow or yes but it's like something that you maybe you had you were focusing on a while ago and then it's like it's processing through okay um yeah like it but you take a little while for it to come through mm. but you don't even know what it is mm -hmm. do you know like when you're just you just had it again now that you wanted to, the yeah. feeling of crying but you don't know what it is that you want to cry about yeah but you don't actually cry. No. So in that moment, I would say, um, and not that you're going to do it right on a podcast is I would say, because you're so good at writing when that feeling comes, go to writing. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be, um, because that's your greatest way is like when that comes to say like, well, what is this about? Mm -hmm. Um, and then begin to write it out. Okay. I will do that. And then you can come back to our podcast and share my homework. <laughs> my homework. Yeah. Like it's been like over a month that it's been happening. Like I was even telling my husband about it and I was like, Oh, there it comes right now. Yep. Just <laughs> again, again, do, do, do. Okay. Thank you. Sign. Working, and working like I, things. well, like I say to people too, when they have the feeling around their throat is also to acknowledge your throat by touching your throat. So, um, because sometimes people feel strange to touch parts of their body when they're working through something, but for you, if you're feeling it at your throat and it's like that you're wanting to, um, you're, you're working through it is to like, so when you've got that feeling like, oh, I feel like I want to cry. It's because I want to say something. So you start to just, even by saying like into yourself, like, I know, like, I'm, I know I'm working through it. I know I'm getting there mm -hmm. is enough from over your mind to your body to be saying we're doing this. Like, um, does that make sense? Yeah. It's like an acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. Like, so yeah. back in the day, um, back in the day, uh, when I, um, I was taught to pat myself on my own back. Um, and so, um, and it was such a, he, I love the way he said it. He just said, 
you look outward for acknowledgement of things you've done, but you don't need to. So come inward. And every time, like if you, if you changed your oil by yourself, if you did something for yourself, pat yourself on the back, you move the groceries up by yourself, like whatever it is, whatever it is, you're proud of yourself. You're proud of yourself. Go to your own back and start to realize these things that you're doing for yourself and pat yourself on the back. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Cause he's like, that's building. We don't do that for ourselves. And so we look to other people okay. and, um, it was a thing for me to go like, yeah, you know what? That actually was a good thing. I did like, I did that. Mm-hmm. And so it was just going inward for myself. So when we start to break these chakras open and you speak openly on certain things, but it's, there's obviously something there that's ready to be released that you might not even realize that's wanting to come through. Right. I think I just get impatient with it. Yes. I want it to be instant. Like this whole time, it's like right there that you've been talking about it. I wonder what it is. I know. I know. It's on one side right now, but anyway. So might be boring for your listeners right now, or maybe other people have that not just that, but something like that, that they're like, why does this always happen? I think more people are similar to you Mm -hmm. wanting to express it um, and not knowing why, like where that block is. Right. Right. Um, And able to express in some ways, but then not able to express. So I think this conversation makes the most sense, which is why I think for you, writing is so good. My thing. Yeah. Yeah. I go searching and get I scrutinize is also my problem I like squeeze the crap what is it what is it what is it (laughs) I end up just being frustrated because I'm like ah don't know the answer it's not black and white don't like it right working on it and it's yeah it's usually it is that little in it's there yeah I just yeah more writing more writing and it's, it's further back than you realize. I hate it when you don't tell me. God, <laughs> uh, make me do so much work on myself so that I'm proud of myself in the end. <laughs> so how are you doing? <laughs> Well, I realized I'm not in style at all. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, ditto. <laughs> ditto. Like, I can't keep up. I think that's just part of being this age. But I do remember my mom saying after my sister and I had both moved out and her saying, I never know what's in style anymore ever since you guys moved out. Um, she's like, that's one thing I miss so much. And so I'm, I guess maybe I should look forward to the teenage fashion phase. Maybe I'll feel fashion forward then. <laughs> I keep thinking I like, what if I'd held on to one pair of bell bottom jeans, but obviously they wouldn't be in style because they would be, they would the be old bell bottom jeans. Yeah. But um, yeah, like I just, I, you go out with them and I'm like more chase than Hudson because Hudson's still well, not as stylish, right? Pants. Yeah. He's wearing his track pants, but the track pants are all the style. Like that's what right. everybody's wearing. Right. Um, and so you go into every store and that's just all they're wearing. So you look like we went into every single place and I'm like, I, and I'm pulling out the jeans and I'm like, I, I can't like, can't. Are you talking about the jeans you pulled out for your son or for yourself? Oh, well, I mean, their section, right? Like they're like, that's. Yeah they're all just like, they're you're either super skinny for the guys, super skinny mm-hmm. and ripped. I mean, basically like Maddie, like that's what the guys yeah. are wearing. Right. Or they're massive and rolled up high. Well, like you saw, right? Like that's what the jeans are. Yeah. And then, so I'm like, I'm just going in the girl section, but then I'm like, okay, they're either like flutters, right? Like, so they're really high and wide leg. Right. Yeah. Like, and really that's, is, it is really hard to look hot in that style. I, in my opinion. 
I, I can't like, but that's what, and then you're walking around. So they're up to here, like right up to your chest line. Yeah. Then I'm, I'm like, okay, I, 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 and then big boots and I, I just, so then I think, okay, okay. Could I, could I, but then, then you do the math and go, this one outfit is going to cost me $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you go shoes jeans shoe jeans and top jacket, right yeah, whatever right like well not where I shop but yeah but even right like I'm even looking... in style that it's going to look good on you yeah high enough quality but, high yeah. enough quality because you think one pair of jeans and then some H&M things like one pair of jeans now is like 285 oh my like God. it's 285 like I have to like that's why I still buy my jeans at Mark's Rick Warehouse yes <laughs> I know but then we're not I think so, it look good what else does what else that's, well that's what I decided I'm like you know what flower dresses it's just gonna be like we are we are just going to stay with the fact what I decided is who's who lived upstairs and come and knock on our door Three's oh coming. oh the uh <laughs> Mrs oh what is her name yeah that's the one her that's yeah. who I am now um yeah you know who she is and that's who I am it's just I I <laughs> it's an R this is Roper Mrs. Roper there we go your Mrs. <laughs> Roper dress is because really it, it doesn't make any sense there's no way I cannot do it I can't like I skirts for skirt me. yeah I just skirts the way tutus yep it's uh t-shirts um yeah sandals it's, uh, boots. yeah I really struggle with anything in between sandals and boots not really yeah. with it. do you wear it's too cold not to wear socks but you can't wear socks with that shoe I don't know what to do I know I just was walking around going like I don't I I, I am now truly the mother and yeah. not truly the mother of young children mm-hmm. I am now the middle-aged mm-hmm. mother I am the mother I am the mother and like, I, the, the I am mother. here to hold that hand with you. <laughs> I, I think it's, um, I think you just have to come to a place of acceptance. You will not compete with those young, very young, young adults anyway. No, no. So, I mean, you've got a killer bod, really. I mean, you can wear whatever you want. So you might as well wear the old lady stuff. Yeah. It'll look great on you. Just like, you know, I think I'm just going to wear the circus costume and uh, <laughs> call it a Thursday. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because uh, that that was eye opening for me. I, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I do remember that phase, like from for us or from where I lived, it was the 501s, like the fading. Oh, yeah. Levi's 501s. Yeah. And then they were like 90 bucks. And I was like, oh, that's a lot of money. It's worth it because they're 501s button fly. Perfect fade. Right? They looked like you were wearing your boyfriend's jeans. Yeah. They were so droopy, droopy and like, yeah. Yep. So that is now it. So and- you are now watching your child go through that and eye opening it's very soon will be yours you will be seeing it double vision and uh <laughs> and it'll be seven hundred dollars in jeans and you just and- in just the cost of it where i'm like that is insanity what i am paying <laughs> yeah. more and more i get this nudge as you speak <laughs> yes that i just need to live in the forest yes <laughs> without internet yeah um living off my own foraging yep I just I feel like I might be happier that way I know you know I remember always remember my dad saying like you know we could go and move into the forest we we don't have to talk to anyone I could just pick it up we could just go there and I'd always be like my dad now I'm like you know we could go live in the forest we could (laughs) yeah we could grab you guys I yep. mean, you need some people around because, you yep. know, we need the hunters and the gatherers. 
<laughs> it makes much more sense now. And now I have done the forest walk behind your house. <laughs> it's It would be quite cozy back there. It would be very cozy. We could build our own chairs, our own little hut. <laughs> Yurt. Fires going all the time. We'll just, we'll just run like, the line of natural gas down. Dave, uh, could you go and... Uh... <laughs> we don't want any contact with the outside world, but... We don't feel like cooking tonight. So we, we know that there are a couple of pad ties and a bottle of rosé. <laughs> Dap. Go to it. <laughs> well, that sounds really good. I know. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. How is your throat feeling now? Um, it's, it was actually just, it was, it's still kind of there. It's still kind of there. It's a very, I feel like there is something you need to say. I wish I had this really <laughs> great thing to say. I'm going to work on it. Okay. I got a couple of weeks for before our next podcast. Yes. Maybe it'll be too private and I won't want to share it. No, but at least you will have said it. Now I'm yeah. Now don't I you think this is accountability. Yeah. Don't you think this is an exciting time for you? Like when you look at your journey from even two years ago to now, all the things that you're working on. Don't. Yeah, yes. Yes. So much. Yeah. It's, it's, it is very, a very exciting time. Yeah. I feel like I've just scratched the surface, like tip of the iceberg. Yes. Into this whole spiritual side of myself. I know it's incredible. All started with the flower essence. I think, yep. For the most part. Well, that was just a year ago. Maybe I started a little bit before that, but maybe not. Yeah, no, I think this is like just thinking about it and listening. I was, I went back and was listening to um, like some of the start of the podcast where you were let, talking about, um, you know, doing um, a session with Cody and, oh, yeah. You know, and like, oh, you know, my husband was kind of, you know, nodded his head or whatever. And I think now, like, oh, even Dave, right? Like, Dave, oh, how yeah. open he would be to things now, like how one year ago. And yeah. Just oh, I should I, I should tell the pendulum story. Oh yes, Cindy recently got me a pendulum, and um, my son was playing with it one morning, and uh, he was asked. He's like, "Oh, Dad, ask a question," and um, kind of <laughs> Ouija board style, as my husband calls it. And he said, "Is my dental surgery going to go well today?" And my son took the pendulum out and he says, uh-oh, dad, saying a no. Anyway, um, so, you know, my husband brushed it off, like, oh, whatever, Ouija board. Um, and then uh, he, he, he called me on the way home. He's like, I can't, wilt, I can't wait to tell Carter his stupid toy didn't work. Surgery <laughs> went great. Not that he's vindictive yeah, yeah. Like that. it was just just in a funny way yes like in a joke probably yeah. deep down was like oh gosh what happened? yeah sure enough weeks later back at the dentist didn't <laughs> go well not healing terrible he's like god damn it <laughs> pendulum was right i'm like mm, i know <laughs> sorry i didn't really want to tell you that it was going to be right at the time but we all knew Pendulum doesn't lie. The pendulum doesn't lie. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so yeah, even my husband is oh. trusting in the universe. Did you just feel the throat? Yeah. Is that what you just happened? Yeah, there it is. Those it feels like that. Like this it is sometimes is oh now nah, it's really strong now. Okay. <sighs> I can say that was just a little one. Sometimes it's like really strong all the way down both sides. Yep. God, it's so cool being your friend. <laughs> Love it. Yes, it's a good, this is a great podcast. <laughs> we talked a lot about us. We um, did. <laughs> It's uh yeah, that is so good. And I love, I love how these podcasts, we just never know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, the other thing I was thinking is maybe we need to do a double date podcast with our sister wives. 
Oh yeah, we should totally do that. That would be do great. Like double date. We could ask like questions back and forth. Yes. Okay. That's what we should do. We should do that in two weeks. We're going to do the double date with them. That would be amazing. Okay. That we will. <laughs> I probably could have waited till we stopped recording before I said that. Okay. Well now everyone knows <laughs> that's going to be what's going to happen. <laughs> I love it. Okay. We will tune in for that. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> love you.